Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pulse recording, talking about all the new things that are coming out on the roadmap or things that have been there for a while and have finally made it out. So <clears throat> what we currently do in our format is we look at in development first. These are the things that are back at Microsoft that they are actively working on. Then we move into the rolling out stage, which means that it's on its way out to the various tenants, whether it be GCC, GCC high, commercial, whatever. It's working its way out and you could see it at any time at that point. And then it follows up by launched, which means everybody who is intended to have it should have it by now. Uh, sometimes we have canceled, this week we don't. So we will go ahead and get started. Tamara, would you like to go over what makes you happy in the list this week for in development? Sure, I'll start. Microsoft Teams approvals integrated in SharePoint lists. So list users will now be able to create and manage simple approval requests directly within integrated SharePoint lists. Now, this is supposed to be coming out at the end of this week, but it is, or the end of May, but it is in development. Also in Microsoft Teams, along with the approval flow, there are additional filters added to the approval list. So the approval list within the personal app will include additional filters to filter your approval list with such as keyword search and other options such as approved. So that's also coming out the end of May. Tom, what do you have? So there's <clears throat> two or three things in here that looked interesting to me. One, and this is one that will never affect me because I'm not part of the educational SKU for Teams, but Microsoft Teams, parent connection with chat, email, or phone call. So basically, if you're in the education space and you're using that version of Teams, you're going to be able to connect with the guardians of their student by chat, email, or phone call with a single click. I think that is really awesome because it takes a lot of the hassle away from having to go and find the email, go and find the you know phone number, the whole bit. You just basically click and you are going to be in contact with the Guardian. I think that's really awesome for those who are using Teams. Anything to make the uh, poor people that are teaching right now. Oh, God. Yeah. Quite easier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Visio, format option panes in Visio for the web. So Visio for the web is something that's relatively new, uh, but they have been putting a lot of effort into it. And this particular one, there's gonna be a new format option pane in the Visio web app. It'll bring new shape formatting properties, including dimensions, fill and line formatting right next to your content. As you adjust the value, you see the changes occur at the same time. So much like every web version of everything that we've dealt with, there's quite a gap when you first start. The web version is like, you know, maybe 20% of what the actual client ends up being but they seem to be making pretty rapid um, development pace on getting the Visio web app to where it's getting close to being something you can use on a regular basis. Uh, that's set for June and that's going to all the clients. So worldwide, GCC, GCC high and DOD. And then the last one that I will just toss out there <clears throat> is SharePoint. Planner cards appear within SharePoint team site home page activity feeds. Uh, so if you've got a connected plan to your Microsoft team site, uh, all your task cards that appear in planner are going to show up in the activity feed on the home page, which again, if you're using planner as a way to say, hey, we need to be working on this, we need to be working on that, it's going to make it much nicer to see kind of an in your face these are things that are affecting this particular group. And normally that default web part is found at the common or found at the uh, bottom portion of the page. So when it approaches your due date, it's going to start showing up. Look for that in May. And again, that is a clean sweep of worldwide GCC, GCC high and DOD. So nice. Adam, take us to the geeky side of life. <laughs> There's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, two of them are kind of related and they're nerdy, but not like technical nerdy. Um, so you tend to see development of this um, as they're maturing things that they've already gone through and done. Uh, so the first thing that I wanted to point out is um, Microsoft Compliance Center with purview is related to now be able to support up to seven languages for the threat, targeted harassment, and profanities classifiers. So I've talked about this 
a lot over the last couple of months just because I think it's a tool of technology of doing stuff of like going through and looking for sexual harassment or bullying and stuff of your employees' communications. Well, they're now expanding out where the seven common languages that you typically see rolled out uh, following English. So English, French, Spanish, German, Portuguese, Italian, Japanese, and Chinese. Uh, you're starting to see it follow up where they're building out the features that they've already developed to also support those other languages. You see this with a lot of technologies. So it's nice to see that maturation um, makes it more valuable and approachable for international audiences. And I've even worked with several com uh, companies that maybe had like a very big presence in Japan, for instance. And so needing to have the ability to do that is pretty cool. Along that same vein, I wanted to point out Microsoft Stream, add or edit multiple captions and transcripts for a video and SharePoint OneDrive or Stream. Uh, this is a very similar concept. If you want to put together captions for a video, they will now let you store multiple captions. So traditionally, when you went there and did it, you'd go through and have a transcript of what happened on that video where you go through and have captions that people could see. Well, say you're an international company, you can now tra uh, do a Japanese and English and a Chinese version. So that way, all your employees can see it. They just show up as different tracks inside of the video when you go through and look at it. Uh, so again, just kind of cool making the tools more accessible to a global audience and especially making it more attractive for companies that potentially are supporting multiple different regions or multiple different languages of employees. Um, one of the things that as, as a general rule, I kind of feel um, it always annoyed me when people are not catering to the users that they have. If you have offices in Latin America, you need to have all your stuff working in Spanish and Portuguese probably too, right? As you're going through and doing it based on what country you're working in. So just happy to see that. And then, uh, the final one that I wanted to look at is a little bit more traditional nerdy for me, but something that I thought was pretty cool. Um, it's the idea of having uh, support for trainable classifiers and DLP for U.S. government clouds. Uh, so without getting too nerdy down this this route. Um, the idea of trainable classifiers is one of the technologies that has always been like the aha thing for me. Um, it's always something that when I see presented or talked about, I see is like, this is very futuristic. The idea is I need to teach Microsoft to protect something for me, um, but there's not a pre-built way to identify it. The example that I've seen used that makes a lot of sense, say you're a patent law office and the patent form that people fill out for you is not something that's just like a US patent form, it's a specific form you have for your company. Company. Well, because that forms a repeatable thing that will happen over and over again, you can basically teach AI in Office 365 to learn what's important. So when a patent form is uploaded in the future, it knows what type of information it should be protecting, it should not be allowed to go out, stuff like that. That technology of trainable classifiers have been around for a little bit, but they're now extended out to incorporate that with DLP policies in the government clouds as well, too. So again, in this case, I could teach a trainable classifier to look at my patent form that people would fill out and it would know, okay, I now know what the patent number is and I now know what the name of the invention is and those should be protected. So then if someone tries to send an email that has the name of that invention and the patent number in it, even though the only way it's seen it is a document that's been uploaded, the trainable classifier will have taught itself that no, I need to be blocking this and your DLP will work without future interaction or, or future manual intervention on your part. So super cool technology interaction point. Again, this is one of those things that when I first learned it, like like, you know, every now and then you get one of the technology pieces in the industry we work in. And you're like, the future is here. This has always been one of those things for me. I think it's really cool that you can basically train artificial intelligence to do the work that you need for it customizably. And this is just a, an advancement of that feature to incorporate into DLP for the GCC and GCC iClouds. That's cool. I do have another one for in development. Go for it. Was I grabbing yours, Tom? No, you weren't. I was pretty much at the end of mine. I was ready to move on to uh, rolling out. So go for it. No, you this can... one's really cool. OneDrive, oh. rename add to OneDrive shortcut. So I Microsoft... was sure one of y'all would do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Microsoft has added the ability to rename shortcuts that you've added using the add to OneDrive feature within OneDrive web. So what this means is, I don't know about you, but I'll like add a link to a work in progress library. Well, I've got 157 work in progress libraries <laughs> on different sites. So it's like, mm, which work in progress library is it? When I click the link, where will I go? So this will allow you to rename those links so you could even include the name of the site. So it'd be a little more user friendly. 
And then the other thing that I wanted to bring up, and this is for GCC High and DOD, is the attendance dashboard is coming out in June. This is very exciting. So in the meetings, we've had no way to take attendance other than doing like a screen capture of the participants pane. So this will be a great feature. People have been clamoring for this for I years bet. now. So very excited to have that. Anything else you want to hit on, Adam, before we move to rolling out? Now let's move on down. OK, rolling out is really short. We've only got yes. five items out there, so I'm going to jump in first since I've got the microphone right now <laughs> because this is the only thing I saw in here that I Do felt like I could talk about. Stick? Do you have the yes, talking I, stick? Yes, I have the talking stick. I have the talking pillow. I have everything right now. <laughs> um, Microsoft Teams give take control for Citrix on virtual desktop infrastructure. So a lot of times when you're in Teams, you'll say, hey, you know, take control of my screen and do something with it. That's all well and good if you had a real computer sitting in front of you, but if you were in a virtual environment on Citrix or something like that, you didn't have that capabilities. Well, now they're actually rolling out that feature in Microsoft Teams to where it will interact with the virtual desktop infrastructure. So I think that'll be really great, especially if you have groups of people who maybe work remote and they don't have an actual laptop, you just have them, you know, remote into their Citrix virtual machine, whatever, uh, they're now going to be able to have more of a full experience in Teams than they've had before. So that's really cool. And again, that's GCC, GCC High and Worldwide DOD. Sorry, you don't get this one. <laughs> or they already have it. Or they already have it, which would be surprising, but. Yeah, okay. um, one thing I'd like to point out is Microsoft Teams support of live caption for Teams on VDI for VMware. So Teams users on virtual desktop infrastructures will be able to use the live captions. And live captions display the text version of the audio during a call. So that's supposed to be rolling out the end of this month. It's supposed to be rolling out to GCC and worldwide. Adam? Uh, there's one in there that I even had to do a little bit of research on this one, but I think it's pretty Ooh. cool. Um, I'm not going to go into like the super nerdy part of it, but if you think it's something you're interested in, I encourage you guys to do it. Azure Active Directory verifiable credentials. Um, what the update says is verifiable verifiable credentials let organizations confirm information about someone without collecting and storing their personal data. Organizations will be able to issue digital versions of a variety of credentials, such as physical badges, loyalty cards, and government issued paper documents based on open standards. Um, when you actually go through and start reading what this is, this is actually in, in preview right now. So it's something you really wanted to do, you could go through and look at it. Um, but it basically uh, revolves around the idea of what they call DIDs, which is decentralized identities. Um, and it basically gives you the ability to um, kind of the least privileged access approach that Microsoft is so big on from a security standpoint. It lets you, without having to store a whole bunch of information about your employees and the people that you're going through and working with, still be able to do identifiable information that you can associate with those individuals to create temporary credentials and stuff like that that they can use. Again, without having to store a whole chunk of data that's liable to be exposed or to be stolen or anything like that. It's, it's a cool concept. Um, I don't have any specific application for it, um, but if you're an organization that's going through and wanting to really embrace least privilege access and really trying to update your security model, I could see DIDs and the whole idea of verifiable credentials as a whole uh, being an attractive thing for you to do as an organization. Nice. Well, with that, we will go ahead and head into our final category of launched. And Adam, I'll go ahead and let you continue on since you have such a role going there. <laughs> sure. I mean, launched has several things in it that's kind of cool. I think probably uh, the one thing I'll point out just because they've talked about this before, and I think it's something that is cool for the education space, um, career uh, career coach student engagement insights for our education users is now actually rolling out in full. The whole idea behind this is faculty and staff license holders will be able to view aggregated student engagement information as their career coach. So it basically gives you the ability in an education suite, if you are someone that has a license that identifies you as like an admin or an instructor, to basically get insights about what the students are doing in ways that you can try to use it to help them to realize where they might need additional encouragement to 
potentially go through and highlight good work that they've been doing, stuff like that. It's basically kind of like a mini version of like Dell, but with insights, specifically designed around helping people in a you know modern education space that we have that's you know remote and decentralized and everything you have now get better into insights into what's going on with their their kids and with the students that are happening in general i'm always a big fan of this we we, we talked about the education one earlier in launch i think probably being a teacher in the western world right now is the hardest it's ever been i think especially when you have a situation where kids are probably not as engaged as they normally would be or maybe don't have the discipline of sitting and being in a classroom it's a very thankless job where they don't get paid nearly enough money um so anything that's going through especially for the teachers that are really looking to make a difference because i would say the vast majority of teachers out there like they're not doing it for the pay guys like they're doing it because they genuinely <laughs> want to make want to make a difference and want to improve students and, and want to you know be that different maker for kids out there and so tools that are you know giving them insights in ways that they can really be better teachers and and better cater to the students that they're doing with um, is something i'll always get behind awesome yeah. um outlook view and navigate the organization chart so the org explorer for outlook is going to help you visualize and explore your company's internal structure work teams and individual roles if the information that it's pulling from is up to date. Well, there is that. <laughs> so I have rarely seen an organization that has all that information populated or kept up to date. So really, the Org Explorer is only as good as the data that it pulls from. I must say in our organization, they have feeds coming into Active Directory for that information. And by and large, it is really up to date and current, and you can count on it. So I'm Great. apparently very fortunate in that case. One, um, one company. <laughs> one company. There you go. Uh, one that I saw up here, Microsoft Graph, new privacy controls for Microsoft Graph-based insights. So for administrators who wish to enable granular control over where intelligent insights are available to their employees, they're going to have some new controls that allow you the ability to configure the visibility of graph derived insights between users and other items in the graph, such as documents or site across apps and services in Microsoft 365. This is basically coming out to GCC. So I'm guessing we already have this in commercial, but I know a lot of people get a little freaked out when they go out and say, how does it know all this stuff about me? And how did it make a connection that I can see this document because Bob was working on it and I work with Bob. Um, I think being able to have a little bit more control over that is probably good to get rid of some of those feelings of, I'm really revealing a whole lot of information that I don't want to reveal, which in reality they're already revealing anyway, but this will give you a chance to be a little bit more uh, more controlling of that so that's probably yeah. a really good thing but graph totally got rid of that whole security by obscurity thing correct because it's surfacing up the information now as an employee if i had to god forbid report my manager for something i don't want my manager notified that i reported them for something true so i think it's great that we're getting more control over what graph exposes yeah and I think it's just, it's also one of those things that somebody says, hey, I'm putting information in this document library. We had an instance like this where they're like, well, that shouldn't be available to everybody. Well, you've got it in a library that's available to all employees. Well, we need to turn off Delve. Like, no, no. I think you need to control your libraries. <laughs> uh, uh, when so, I was at my previous company, uh, they had someone who was in the senior side of finance uh, post bonus information about all of the executives in a ouch. publicly accessible SharePoint document library. Ouch. Awesome. That stuff should be public. Oh, I agree. <laughs> That's a different argument, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But not I'm sure that part, I'm sure that individual person didn't have a great day, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Adam, do you have anything else that you nope. want to cover? Okay, I'm well, good. with that, I think we will go ahead and call it a week. Uh, and it's been a long one. Next week, you will probably only see Adam and or Jen because Tamara and I will be a day before our wedding on next Saturday. So no. we're just a little busy, <laughs> a little stressed out and all the good things. But yes, we are getting married and that I will be- I haven't written my vows yet. Tom has. I've written mine. 
So I'm going to uh, do all kinds of things. She's not doing diddly. <laughs> if Jen is not here, we will probably just not have an episode because no one wants to just hear me talk. Let's be real. Um, so we might have like a week <laughs> off to celebrate Tom and Tamara, but, but we shall there see. There you go. Fabulous. Well, with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday, a great weekend, or a great day whenever you happen to get around to watching this. So with that, bye, everyone, and we will talk to you in some period of time in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.